the Go Crying to Walk In podcast. I'm Chef Cholo. You already know. Today I have a very, very special guest. I think I say that every time that I have a very special guest because right now a lot of these people are very special to me. But uh, today my guest is Billy Miller. He's from the Restoration Kitchen in Lindenhurst. Brother, welcome. It's good Been to see while. you today, man. It's been a Been long a time. While. You know, uh, you know, people. Uh, you know, I have a long history on Long Island. I'm 55 years old. You know, I've been I've been in, working in restaurants a long time, and uh, you know, you never know the impact y- you make on somebody. You know, uh, and that's that doesn't rain doesn't ring any truer than 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 with Bill, because. Sure. If you would have to, if someone would have say to me, you know, oh, uh, uh, you know Billy Miller, or, you know this and that, I say yeah, and I, I basically, I, I don't even remember really, we you know, working so much together. You know what I mean? Uh, honestly, my only real memory, and I'm going to tell you right now, was like, my sister was getting married at the Vanderbilt, which was where we met, which we, we were working together, and. Uh, my whole family was in, in town. My aunts and uncles were here from Florida. And the night before my sister's wedding was the Jingle Bowl, I think. The Z100 Jingle Bowl. Is that what it was? I think so. Okay, it was a big, big event for Z100. Lots of I people. I remember this story. And my family was like, it was seeing what I did. You know, they were at the Vanderbilt. I had them in a skybox. And they were all watching the concert. And everything was really cool. And... Uh, it was like they were going to go home. They were, they were staying in the hotel next door. And, like, I was walking them out the back. And Billy was right with me. My little brother was there, too. Scotty was there, too. Because he said he remembered this. And we walked by this doorway that was open. had a big storage area. And uh, we had an ice machine in the back of this room. A huge ice machine. And as I'm walking, I look to my left. And there's two guys urinating, <laughs> peeing in this ice machine. Now, as a younger man, I had a very, very short, <laughs> short fuse and a really strong temper. And I remember just charging at these two guys. And, you know, and then I turn around after I, after, I think they were on the floor already. And it was just me. And I turn around and my family, my aunt and my nieces, they're like, they're like, oh, my. they can't even believe what they're seeing. And I look at, and I go to Billy. I go, Billy, get rid of my family. <laughs> get them out of here. I remember that one. It's, that's exactly yep. what happened, right? Yep. And then they go, and then, and then that's it. Now, again, now, Billy's family, I've been very close with. Billy's sister, Regina, worked for me for 10 years, from when she was in high school until we all left that place. Yeah. And she became someone that was very, very important to me and very close to me. And what always impressed me about, uh, you know, the family, uh, the Miller family, is that they, they were incredibly nice people. Like, your dad, like, drove the white truck that's on the northern state, right, yep, Bill? Yep. Like, this says the LIA. help. the Yep. The one that says help on yep, the side? Yeah, that was him. Like, his dad drove that. Like, who do you know that drives the help truck? First of all, who wants to get out of their car on the expressway <laughs> and help people and help somebody? <laughs> I thought it would be nobody. You know, dad's name's Bill, right? No, Brian. Brian, right? Yep. Brian Miller. That's who wants to do it. Yeah. So, I, I could just, I just felt so, so like so much. You know, like I needed to take care of Regina. You know what I mean? I was like, these, these are the people I always wanted to have around me: hardworking people with a good family, so on and so forth. So, you know. Billy worked for me. Maybe even one of your other brothers might have worked there for a short time. We all did at one point. Might have worked there for a short time, and uh, I don't know if Michael worked there, but you know, you know, it went on and on, you know. And then life goes on. I move on. I do a lot of things, and I think maybe ten years goes by, right? And I'm working at Bald Hill. Uh, You know, I'd already left the job that I was at. It was just before I came to the Vanderbilt, and I was working at Bald Hill and. Uh, you know, Billy's brother Regina always works for these guys in the summer. She helps them do concerts. I don't know if she still does, but she yeah. always did. And the reason why they love Regina is because she has a huge friend group, and they'll do all her friends will do anything they want for her because yep. anybody will do anything for her. Yeah. And when they needed twenty guys out of nowhere to go pour beer, Regina could just pick up the phone and bring twenty people. Yep. So I was out there working one day, and she says to me. She says, "You know, uh, Billy Billy graduated uh, college and." Uh, 
He wrote a he wrote his thesis about. Is that what it was? What is it? A thesis? What am I? Can, yeah. we, can you can, uh, first of all? Let's cheers. Billy cheers. brought us Billy brought us old fashions today with some fine fine bourbon. So before we get going, let's celebrate. Cheers, cheers Billy. I like to slurp a cocktail. Nice. That's what I do. It's so. Talk to me about college and, <laughs> and, and, then, and how this came about. Because honestly, I was more than flattered. I was, I was just blown away. And I, yeah. I told my mom. I told everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I, after I left Vanderbilt, I went away from my undergrad. I finished. Uh, I went and I went Where'd to Where did you do your undergrad? Albany. Albany. Yes. And that was after you worked yeah. at, 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 yeah. at, at the Vanderbilt. And then after Albany, I got a job teaching, and then I came back and went for my master's degree, and that's where they uh, talked a lot about psychology side of things. I wanted to be a counselor. So I did a lot of psych stuff, and a lot of psych stuff means a lot of stuff in your past, and a lot of things that influence you to be where you are, who you are. Wow. And uh, yeah, you were one of them. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Still now, are. now, you still do that? Are you still work in that field? No. With the I restaurant? Oh, no. That was no. A, you left that. So I worked in that field for a while. Uh, I did Like counseling. in the school system? I started in the school system and I didn't like it, so I did nonprofits for a while. Nonprofit. Now, what do you mean by that? Like as a social worker? Social worker, yeah. Right, right. Yep. I worked with a lot of kids, um, a lot of just kids who need a little help. Little now, hand. now, you mean like uh, kids on the spectrum, autistic yep. kids, or something like more like uh, underprivileged, like don't have money or something like that? Spectrum, kids who didn't need money or kids who didn't have money, and then, you know, kids maybe like you growing up, causing a little bit of trouble. Yeah, well, you know, when I was growing I up, they didn't it. have any help. They didn't have any help. No. They, they, you were either a bad kid or a good kid. Yep. Now yep. they have labels and they have things to You told to me help. a lot of those stories. <laughs> uh, your kids, how old are they now? How old are the boys? 22. So their first birthday party, we went and you asked me for help and we drove to your house and you told me all the, all, all the good stories about your childhood. About my, tell me one. You remember any of them? Because yeah. I have a hard time. So there's a around. spot in a window if you throw a rock at it, it shatters the whole entire window. Right in the bottom corner, I think you told me all about. It was if you <laughs> Yeah. It's not just a window. If you hit a storefront window That's it. with yep. a baseball bat in yeah. the bottom corner, That's it. it'll drop down like a curtain. Learn that one from you. Yeah. <laughs> I do some guy <laughs> Don't ask me why I know how to do that or what uh -huh. came out of that store after the window was broke. <laughs> But, you know, we all got to pass. So, I see, I taught Billy all the worst things in life, and he still nah, wrote good nah. things about me. No, you taught me a lot of the best things, too. You taught me the value of a dollar. You taught me hard work. You taught me... You were a hard worker to begin nah, with. But you taught me a lot of the hard work yeah. stuff. And the second you weren't, you'd hear about it. Yeah. yeah. I was good at that. I think that's where the go cry and the walking comes from. <laughs> yeah, many... Oh, my God. So, after I started doing this podcast, so I put them up on YouTube, and, you know, people see them, and they're like... People are like, oh, my God, you made me do this. You made me... Yeah. <laughs> I cried so much. Everybody wants a t-shirt now. Yeah. I have to start making these t-shirts. You, you got a t-shirt guy, Billy? Yeah, I could find one for you. <laughs> I need that. I need that. Yeah. So, you're in psychology. You're in social work. Is that where you met your wife? Yeah. So I was uh, in South Carolina. I went. I moved South to Car South Carolina. This all to teach. happened in South Carolina. This didn't happen in New York. No, I, I moved down to South Carolina to teach. Uh, I started my master's program. That's where I was almost finished with it. And then I came back up here. I met my wife while I was down there. So came she's back from South Carolina. No, your wife. she's from up here. She's from. Long came Island. up on a Christmas holiday. Met her. That was it. Oh, so you you met her here in New York. Yep. Right. Right. So she's from. from she's Comac. from. She's from Comac. Yep. Right. And you were like, in a bar? Because you're a handsome guy. I've seen you operate, bro. I mean, I don't want, I know, I don't want Mrs. Miller to get the wrong <laughs> idea right now. Because I know, yeah. even though he's an awesome operator, he's, a, he's probably the most faithful guy in the world. So yeah. I don't, she doesn't have to worry about that. But you were quite the man. I remember you as a young man. Yeah, you were not shy. I was not shy. You Never were not been shy. shy. Never been shy. <laughs> Never been not shy. at all. No, um, no. Yeah, I met her, came up here. I met her through my older brother. We went out for drinks with her and... That's kind of it. Flew up a couple times to see her. And, Mikey. Uh, yep. And then so I uh, what did she, packed was up she and came in the restaurant? home. I'm sorry. No. Was she in the restaurant business? No. No. What did all. she do then? She she never understood the restaurant business. She, it's a different animal. Not many people understand no. it. Uh, she worked. She works for Farmingdale State College. Um, she she was, still does now. Yeah. She still does. So, listen. What I can't believe, and what we're going to get into next, is that th this restaurant that you own in Linlinhurst, Hurt, Restor Restoration Kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Yep. First of all, you're from Lindenhurst? I live there, yeah. I grew up in West Babylon. You grew up in West Babylon. Yep. Right. What made you choose Lindenhurst? Lindenhurst, so I've lived in Lindenhurst for about seven years now. 
Uh, I got married in Lindenhurst. My mother grew up in Lindenhurst. Oh, that's where your mom's from? Yep. Okay. Um, so she got a lot of aunts yeah. and stuff in there. I mean, my father had his bachelor party at the Sea Haven restaurant in Lindenhurst. Wow. You know? I used to ride my bike through there. It, was, uh, it, it meant something to me. What was this restaurant before you opened it? It was, it was a, a restaurant? Pe- no, it was a uh, ice cream shop. Ice cream. And before that, it was just one of those dive bars. Dive bar in Lindenhurst. It, it definitely has that old school yeah. look to it. I just I was there recently. You weren't there when I was there. I know. I yeah, heard. It was all right. Because... You're, well, you happen to be located in Lindenhurst, which is the home of the Holy Black. Yes, my boys. <laughs> which, if great. you watch my podcast, I saw them you, know, already. you know how much I love these guys and how much I'm into this yeah. scene. So, you know, it only behooved me to go see Billy when I was down yeah. there getting my hair cut. And like I said, he wasn't there. Uh-huh. The food was aw- <laughs> The food was awesome. Good. And the service was good. And that's like and that's like my biggest thing. I mean, a lot of restaurants out on Long Island do a great job with the food. But it's it's hard to get young people to understand uh, about caring about people yeah. because this generation of younger people are kind of like you know they're more like what am I going to do for myself right it's now? It's a me society. It's a me society. You know what I mean? It's not a lot of you know how am I going to help people stuff. And again, I, I see it in my own children, my own two sons. You know what I mean? My son Cole starts off every conversation when you know when there's a controversy with, well, you know, Dad, I feel. You know what I mean? I don't ever remember telling my dad the way I felt. Mm. Me, I just don't remember yeah. like, saying that. You know, he wanted me to do something, I did it. You know what I mean? And I didn't say, "Hey, Dad, you know, I don't feel like this and that." And listen, and 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 you know, half the time when Cole does that, he's right. You know what I mean? So I, I don't necessarily have a problem with this generation. I just recognize their difference, and then and I, and I also can recognize that you know service as an industry takes a different kind of person. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, whatever you're doing over there to train those kids, you're doing a good job with them. And, and, and I, I got lucky. I, I, didn't so wa- I don't just watch my waiter. I, I watched the other table's watch waiter. Yep. <laughs> and I watched your manager. And I watched everybody, you yeah. know? and uh, Service is the key. I mean, I think, yeah, you can have great food. You can have great drinks. You can have a lot of things. Decor, lighting, this, that, and the other thing. But if you don't have good service, it all goes out the window. Nobody remembers any of the lighting or the... Or the food at that point, or you if know the, the decor. Is no good, if the service man. is bad, all they're going to remember is bad service. And it I think service sets people apart. It is the only difference. Yeah. I mean, food is is pretty. Uni- I mean, people. A lot of people do a really good job on food, and you can find yeah. a lot of good food in a lot of places. But can you walk out of there? Because again, you know, we're paying for food now. Yeah. You know, we're not. You know, you're not. You're not going in there for thirty dollars a person anymore. No. Nowhere. Nowhere. And that's not no knock on anybody's restaurant. No. No knock on what you do or anybody. But you're going to a restaurant and you're gonna have a drink and you're gonna have an entree and maybe you're gonna share a couple entrees, you're gonna be seventy dollars a person. Yeah. You're gonna be sixty five, seventy dollars a person. And it's fine. And I don't mind spending that money on good things. As long as you feel good when you leave. And and and, and I think that like you said, the service. But what blows my mind about your restaurant, and again, this is in my life. I've never heard of it, and I, I, I bury myself in restaurants. I, my Instagram, I was on a diet for the last two years, <laughs> and I couldn't even watch Instagram because everything is food. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. You know, to well, you look my, good. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. I started to count all the big, giant, fat guys that were over 60, and I, 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 I yeah. couldn't get past three fingers. <laughs> so I had to figure that out. You know what I mean? So I figured that out, and we're doing okay. But like I want to get back on track. You and your wife, you 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 have this you have a successful restaurant and you take your profits and you give them to charity. Now I think I might have heard this before, but I don't I never seen it happen. Now I work at the Crest Hollow Country Club, I'm the executive chef. And we're a big, big fundraising place. So I see I've been to a bunch of fundraisers. I see fundraisers and I yeah. see this kid with the thousands of thousands of dollars, the big check you're handing over. With Christine Renner, were you at Christine yeah. Renner? At Christine Renner, which is an incredible organization, yeah, the most incredible people. And I and 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 how and, ha- and, and you you're handing over tens of thousands of dollars that could get you a better car, that could get you a swimming pool in your house, that could do a lot of things for you, but you don't. So how did this this concept come about? I want to know. I gotta know. Yeah. I gotta know. I mean, like I said before, my 
you know, my past kind of put me that way. I think my my family, like you said earlier, pushed me that way as well. But but how do you come up with the idea, Bill? I mean, look, I was I was working as a I was working in, in nonprofits for a long time, and I looked at nonprofits and I sat there and looked at the CEOs of nonprofits who were making millions upon millions of dollars, driving their helicopters to go here, there, I the other see thing. That, yeah. And I looked. I said, "This isn't how it's supposed to be." Mm-hmm. I said, "It's supposed to be real. It's supposed to come from the heart. It's actually supposed to mean something." You know, it's not just supposed to be a dollar number or another helicopter or another private jet. So I took it and I said, I know the restaurant business. I've been in it since I was 15. Uh-huh. You would started teaching me when I was 16 years uh-huh. old. Um, and I said, I know the restaurant business and I want to leave the world a little bit better. So why don't we try to combine my two, my passion and my knowledge. I knew the restaurant business. My passion was to help people. people. You know, I went to school for it. I did a, right. my master's degree trying to fix it all. And, uh, Put it all together, and here we are. And I, I mean, I looked at my wife, and I said, "This is what I want to do." She looked at me, and she said, what "The hell's the matter with you?" Like, I think, like everybody else does. That was my big and question. How I was like it. your wife with this? Like, she believes in who we are, and believes in what I wanted to do. I mean, she saw the passion in what I wanted wow. to do, and uh, I took it and I ran with it. How much time do you have to spend in the restaurant? You're there every day. <laughs> Because you no. have young kids, right? I have two. I know yeah. you went there one day. You told me you were with yeah. the girls, though. Yeah. I have a seven-month-old and a two-year-old. Seven yeah. and two. Yeah. Bill, you got the bus way back there. Yeah. Chef Cholo's got two twenty-two. Uh, yeah, well, you had two at the same exact time. At least I had 20 months in between the two. Two boys, Bill. I don't yeah. Want to say I got two girls now. I don't want to say Yeah. Anything, you know. It's surprising. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, such a womanizer like yourself getting two <laughs> girls. God giving you two yeah. girls. I, I deserve that. You might deserve have deserved it. that, yeah. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little payback deserve. going yeah, on. Definitely. Not yet, of course. Um, two and seven months. Yeah, give it time. I'll call you when they're 16. Uh-huh. I already bought my first shotgun. You got the shot. Well, we all need a shotgun. Yeah, I don't need I don't need shells. Just going to polish it and sit on the couch and polish it all day long. The clacking of a That's shotgun yeah, is the most scariest. I, I, I don't know. Me sitting on a couch with a brush is clean. The it's brush, be the cleanest shotgun in the world. I'll tell yeah, you that much. It'll be really clean. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm into that too. But uh, so, do you, do, 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 you know, your kids are two. They don't even know about anything yet. They don't even I know what, what this is all about yet. But I think they're going to be really impressed. They're there every day with me. Though. They're there every day? Yeah. Wow. So teach they, them young. That's great. That's great. Uh, so what is mom and dad up to now? Like what both is he, retired. They both retired. They're spending a lot of time with my my girls here. Your and there. dad's they, still involved with the church. He was like a church, pastor, right? Fire department. Yeah, he's a deacon. He's Big fire. Fu- what, what fu- he's with Lindenhurst, West Babylon. West Babylon. Yep. Been for uh, where, where, 30, you, 40 years. I'm gonna, this is a message years. to Brian Miller. Where's West Babylon having all their installation dinners? Because <laughs> I'm yet to see them at the Ooh. Crest Hollow. There's, I'm going to put a zinger out uh, right now. I'll make sure he hears that one. Let Brian know uh-huh. Crest Hollow is the king of installation dinners. Uh-huh. Syosset coming up on Sunday. Man, man I, I think I have about He's gonna seven. He's going to be jealous now. I'm telling Bill. He's going to pass it forward now. Brian, do you want to have a bacon bar at your... <laughs> I mean, I want to have a baby. You want to have? <laughs> you would definitely be at the installation dinner. Yeah. I would demand that all Millers were present <laughs> at the installation dinner. I see your brother a lot around Crest yeah. Hollow. Was he He's a real estate guy? Yeah, works for LIBOR. LIBOR, Long Island Board yeah. of Realtors. Yeah, we do like a week with LIBOR, man. I mean, there were weeks on end before COVID hit that he saw you every week. I seen him look. all the time, but yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. Well, I hope, I hope. Listen, I hope a lot of people get it back. I hope to see Libor come back in there and do their yeah. big, do their big thing. And you know, it's so funny because, like, again, I, I pay attention, man. I look around, yeah. you know what I mean. And again, uh, I, I see your brother Michael. You know, everyone's like, "Hey, Mike, hey, Mike, yeah. hey, Mike." You know what I, mean? <laughs> I feel like you know, it's like hey, Regina, Regina, Regina. You know what I mean? It's just, it just some people get it and some people don't get it. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's what makes you very special. Now, uh, I always talk about social media on the show. And I, what, what, what's, you, you, you big social media guy, no. Bill? Not no, at all, right? I hate it. You hate it? My wife holds social media. Your she wife does, holds it. She on. handles all of it. But I can see who's handling it for the restaurant because I see she somebody is. is. Wifey's doing that. Yeah, she does great. She does do great because I'm yeah. always seeing what's happening over yeah. there. I'm always seeing what's new, what's going on. But also my on. staff. My staff. Well, they just do it, do it, right? They'll they'll put it together for me and send it. And I put now, it out I was going to say, do you trust them to, yeah. to do it on their own or no? They want they send it to you. I do during uh, work hours, after hours. It's a different story. It could get wicked. Yeah, could get you, know, wicked. you know the restaurant people. They like to have a couple of drinks after work, and 
Dirty yeah. business. Uh huh. <laughs> it is. We like to drink. See, we're gonna cheers yeah. again. Cheers. Salute, salute. I mean, yeah. I'm really into social media. I'll tell you, they, my my TikTok notifies me when I'm not on there enough. <laughs> you getting those TikTok holes <sighs> all day it's, long? It's yeah. so strange, man. Yeah. I understand how it works. There's a guy on TikTok. His his at is Elroy Redbeard. Now that's that's who he is. But when he comes on, the wife says, "Hey, Jason." So, Bill. The guy's got over a million followers, <laughs> over like 1.2 million. They get like hundreds of thousands of likes on these on these little things they do, and it starts off the same every time. The guy's in his kitchen, big guy, tattoos, red beard, hat on. Somewhere they live somewhere in the Midwest, and he's standing there in the kitchen, and they'll start off. Jason, the wife will be with the camera. You can't ever see her. I think I saw her once. What are you doing? <laughs> And then immediately the guy will chug something. Like he, I don't know how the guy drinks. It, it, eight o'clock in the morning, because you see it's all real time. He'll be on live, and he, oh, he, he's always putting a hole in the bottom of a can and opening the top of a can and shotgunning whatever is beer. He pulls beers out of his pocket, and then he says what he's drinking, and he's always making something because every day is a fun day. So it's either Monday, fun day, Tuesday, fun day, Wednesday, fun day. Everything's a fun day. And then he's making something, and then she asks him what he's making, and then he drinks like he drinks an enormous amount of things in like this one minute video because TikTok is usually very short and things, and then he's gone. So I say to myself, Oh, how, how can I get a little <laughs> Elroy Redbeard thing going? Let me I just get a half your followers. And I'm yeah, good. I need a TikTok, Bill. All right, I, and here I you need are. A TikTok, man. Hmm. So no social media. Not, not me. Not My zero. wife. Does Why? it all for us. She does Why? a great job for it. So the, these two girls, are you going to want to have them work in the restaurant or are you going to be smart? Yeah, them? they got to start somewhere. They're going to start. They got to learn. Is that, yeah. is that their future? No. No. I Social A lot work. of hours, a lot of, yeah. Are they going to be driving the help truck? I don't know. <laughs> you know the restaurant business. It, uh, it haunts you. It does I started with you. no gray hairs and it, then here I am. You got a lot of gray hairs? Yeah. Look at this. I got a full gray beard. I know, but you've had one that. black hair. Yeah, it looks good on you though. I think you die it that way. No. <laughs> I want to say right now today on the Go <laughs> Fucking Podcast, Chef Cholo does not dye his beard. He you doesn't dye his beard. You could ask the guys with the great. holy black. Uh, I will. Nobody would They'll want to be this They'll tell me the truth. Who would want to be Off this color? <laughs> Nobody would want to be all yeah. white. When I was heavier, I used to grow it like really long. And it was just so annoying. Like I remember being at Bryant Park and they have their Christmas festival. Oh, no. there, right? A little kid comes sit on your lap. Dude, like three <laughs> little kids were like, hey, Santa, hey, Santa. I looked at my wife. I'm like, this is not good. <laughs> I remember even asking. I was in like, I was in Macy's at once at, at Christmas time. And, I, I, and this is when my guys were little. I, I didn't have the beard yet. And I was still, you know, I was younger. And, you know, we took them. To, we were in Macy's. And I took them to see Santa in, in New York City because I thought that was important. And... Uh, there's a line of Santas over there. So you see them, the ones that aren't necessarily working. So I say to the guy, how many Santas they got employed here at Macy's? He goes, they hire 90 a season. <laughs> you could have you put your application in. I thought about it. Uh, I thought about it. But 90? the boys at the Holy Black doing a good job over there. Uh, the boys at the I Holy mean, they Black. shaped you up nice. These guys over here, first of best. all, Kevin, master. Hmm. The two boys that own it, Matt and his brother Stefan, Genius, Great and if guys. anybody understands social media, it's these guys. these guys. Have guys. you seen their stuff they put on? Well, now they're into the new. See, now like that's what I was going to hit you with. So they're they're they like they they don't necessarily do so much TikTok, but the style of TikTok is called Reels, and yeah. they use these Reels. I've seen those things. Amazing! It's Amazing. unbelievable. They I go to my staff. One. I say, "How do you do this? Did you Make see this the, work." Did you see the comb in the glass? They all did you see just I recently? Saw that one recently. Everybody my throwing favorite a one comb is in a glass. Somebody jumping in a pool and jumping back out of the pool. That was amazing. Oh. How would they do that? No idea. That was the guy Matt with the beard, right? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the owners. Man, they're impressive. My whole bathroom is wholly blacked out. But their whole concept is impressive. It's Everything they cool. do is it's impressive. It's pretty cool stuff. They're good guys. That town is is shaping up to be some. Do you guys get involved in the the, the thing, the after hours thing that they do in the street? Yep. So it's you a bunch. is your street closed off? No, or no, just Wellwood just, just closed Wellwood, yeah. off. So do you go to a booth or yep. you do? Yep. So what would you do? What so, do you guys go over there? Those wicked tater so tots? We did. Uh, <laughs> we did uh, we did food in one, and then we did mocktails. 
Oh. And then we did beers. Oh, so you're allowed to go start a, do a bar in the street? Mocktails, mocktails, oh, no cock, no mock, no booze. Yeah, mock. mocktails. But we also right next to it, we did a. Um, uh, come on now. Food. No. Nope, dunk nope. tank. Dunk tank. How uh, did I how know you that? Do that? I just guessed that. That was pretty impressive. We did a dunk tank, dunk and we raised tank. a bunch of money for the Lindenhurst Youth Center. Lindenhurst Youth Center has been a constantly thing giving money. Village. That's at the end of the street yep. of where the Holy Black exactly. Warehouse yeah. is. Yep. That little that thing there. So we just put people in the in the dunk tank and raised. I think for two days we raised seventeen hundred bucks. Just really? people throwing balls at a just you know, people throwing want a to ball. dunk somebody. What's uh What's the next big charity you guys are looking at to to help out? Right now we have the Elijah Farm. They do a lot with autistic children. What is Elijah Farm? What is that? Elijah Farm, they help out with a lot of autistic children. It's a uh, an actual farm? Yeah. Is yeah. On Long right, Island? Yeah, right in, uh, right there? here. Right in South Huntington. Right? You, you mean where the, the Restoration Village is? Where uh, Bethpage Restoration Village? No. 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 But Huntington? that's where I got married. Yeah, South Huntington. Man, yep. I don't They're even awesome. know about that. And, yep. you, and that's right. a farmer's Excuse market? You could go buy stuff no. there? No, no, no. But they were farm. They have the farm there. They do a lot with autistic children. So they take them, and they're able to give them life skills and be able to teach them how to produce in, in, in the world today. That's you know? amazing. Yeah, they do a great job. Listen, um, if you could grow food, you'd be all right. Yeah. You'd be okay. Exactly. Especially on Long Island. There's no land. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, got, the, everyone got the big lawn on Long Island, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's, I always said to myself, why would you bother with... I, I'm like, I have the worst lawn. Probably everyone in my neighborhood <laughs> hates me because I'm never home. <laughs> worst driveway, worst lawn. <laughs> but I always said to myself, if I was ever going to like get into my lawn... Or, and take all that time to put it. Would it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be corn. It would be food or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, what am I going to do with grass? Yeah. Lay on Nothing. it? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. That's it. I could grow weed. Mm. You can I now, do right? that already. Yeah. <laughs> Weed's legal now. You yeah, know exactly. That? You're going to get into Good. the weed food, Bale? Uh, no. Probably not. Maybe not. It's probably not. Nice. not. I know Never nothing about it, man. Yeah, yeah, I know nothing about it. I, I know you guys a long time. I don't know you for weed. Yeah, not no. not for a long time. But Bourbon, old, maybe. But all fashions and bourbon. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. I'm going to slurp mine again. Yeah, so now we're working on something new. We're doing a little... Um, I know Mr. Mark Biden was here earlier. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's always Long Island. I mean, he is... Nah, this, upper Epsilon this, of Long Island kid, when it no, comes to restaurants. He, he does a he lot knows of it. killer stuff. And, and like the he, great part about him is he knows it all. It's not just one pigeon toed here. No, he knows it all. He can put himself in anything. How do you know he, Mark? I followed him for a long time. Right, right. A lot of his stuff, Huntington. He worked um, at the Vanderbilt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he worked there. Yeah. yeah, he did. Uh, what did he do? Because I know he's straight. No, he did. No, uh, he was a, we just talked about it. He was yeah. like, he was our purchaser. Yeah. He did the stewarding. Because I never, I, I, like I said to him, I never really knew him for that. You know what I mean? I was already like kind of GMing at the Vanderbilt, so I wasn't watching the kitchen. But Chris Carpenter brought him in, and they needed something. So he, he ended up being awesome. And then, and look, I at, remember, his, yeah. and look at his career now. He's and he's, I mean, I remember Hutch and uh, Hutch, Hitch? Hutch. Hush, Hush. Hush. Yeah, in Farmingdale. Yeah, in Farmingdale, right and there. And Huntington. Huntington. Well, I now remember. his truck is called the Hush Truck. Good. He's at that brewery right next to you quite often. Yeah. That's yeah, Sand City. You probably don't want to know when there's food being served. I love the brewery it. Brewery next door. I love it. You don't care. It brings people. What do you think? Mark Bynum's not going to bring a thousand people with him. You're right. And I they'll know see that. your restaurant. More people to marry him. They'll see Let's your go. Restaurant. That um, actually, that brewery is really good. Actually, I did a great job. Some yeah. of them aren't Those awesome, but that one's really, really Those good. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, they really they are. Did a really good job. I yeah. had their beer first. At first, and obviously, Sand North City Port. is Northport. Yeah. You know, I mean, I grew up and I went to John Glenn High School. So somebody, one of my cousins, brought it to my house uh, at a Christmas at Christmas Eve. And then, uh, yeah, I saw them open up right while I was getting a haircut. I yeah. was like, oh, my God, do look a great at that. job. Man. Yeah, it's freaking cool. But we're, you know, following in uh, a little bit of the food truck concept, and we're, uh, we're actually next spring. We have uh, two cocktail trailers going. Big time. Now, what, like you rent for different. parties? Rent for parties, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so the So it's something new, thing. something different, something... Uh, you bought the trailers like already? Them. Yeah. Something bought cool looking them. or something yeah. like, like different, like an old a lot school of vintage, trailer? Yeah. Vintage. Horse trailers. Some horse old horse trailer. trailers, yeah. Okay. Uh, made them into bars. Um, so oh, you already did it all. Yeah. You're well, a, you're well, a man. Like ninety percent. Right? Yeah, he's there with me. Brian's a man. Yep. Yeah. Didn't he build uh, that thing like you have all you? Th he built like half during the COVID. Stuff. You you built like a huge tent yeah. out there. You so you him and I built a greenhouse. Built that, right? Yeah, we it's built a greenhouse. A greenhouse. Yep. We built a seventy-two foot long greenhouse. Yeah. I mean, I listen. I mean, not trying to throw people out there, but the Holy Black they have a big rooftop, and they said. 
what is it going to take to put it up there? I said, I'll, I'll build it for you. No problem. Yeah, oh, they, they asked you to do one of those greenhouses on the they roof. They asked me to take mine and bring and it, up it up there on the there. roof. Yeah. These guys are smart. They're always they're, thinking. They're geniuses. They're always yeah. thinking. Yeah. Um, it's like but yeah, we built a greenhouse. Coyote, yeah. super genius. Listen, when COVID hit, we sat there and we said, what are we going to do? Are we going to get those little... Sit on our feet? Yeah, no. We're going to get those sit little igloos that everybody got that fits three people? And No, I'm not going to do that. Dude, I, I went into one of those igloos once. It was not... It's it not, was not, it's not cool. pleasant. I felt very uncomfortable. Yeah. I did So I looked it. at those. I looked at big igloos. I looked at here. And then my father-in-law, he... he Worked, he, you know, he worked in greenhouses all of his life. Oh, really? Yeah. What, he's like a farmer? No, so he worked at the Planting Fields Arboretum. And Get he's run here. the greenhouses there for 48 years. So he's like a green, he's like yeah. an arborist, yep. your, yep. your father-in-law. Yep. Wow. So uh, he you looked at me and said, what about a greenhouse? I said, I don't know anything about a greenhouse. I'm in the restaurant business. <laughs> what do you know about a greenhouse, chef? Zero. Exactly. So I looked into it and I said, ah, oh, this can't be that bad. Let's, let's buy but one. It's gigantic. I saw yeah. it. It's huge. Yeah. I said, oh, it's going to take us like a week and a half to build it. It it's took gigantic. us a month. Yeah. A month. It's gigantic. So it was 72 feet long by 34 feet wide. We had a full ventilation system. We had a heating system. I was going to say, do you have air conditioning in there? No. No. But so, but, but we had sides that rolled all the way up. So, so it's in the like summer, it's just a top. We had shades over the top to cool it. Oh, so you could shade it in the summer. Yeah. We built it right. And uh, it, it worked. It worked for a year and a half until um, the village, you know, obviously time yeah. ran out and it was time to go. And oh, so, so uh, those variances that you got in that town yeah. ended. Yeah. But you look around in other towns uh-huh. and that's not the case. Nope. So Huntington still has all this stuff on the yeah. street. Look at the city. The New York Manhattan, City has places outside. On the yeah. So you would now have to apply for because I don't want to get I don't yeah. want to get against the town of Lindenhurst here on my podcast, but <laughs> they actually said time's up. Yeah. So it was time up. I mean, it, so what did you get do it. with that structure? It's done. I ended up selling it to a guy. He's in uh, Greenport, James uh, no Jamesport. Jamesport, the yeah, guy he, that actually grows things under there. Yeah, probably. Wow. Yeah. So that was um, that was good. He was he came, took it down, brought it to him. You put it on like eBay. <laughs> yeah, I put it on everything. <laughs> oh, no, put no. it on anywhere, but eBay, yeah, was one of them. Wow. <laughs> I said whoever wants to come take it. Um, but yeah, so, look, it worked for us. I mean, it it gave us an extra. But do yeah. you still have the picnic tables outside there, or no, now it's just a parking lot? Just now? a parking lot, but we are building a patio outside to get some outside seating in that area. Yep. Because I sat when I when I went, I sat on the deck out there. It was gorgeous. Yeah. Is that so right? we have a deck on the one side, and we're building a patio on the other side as well. Was that deck there when you when you moved in, or you? No, built we it? built it. You built that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell keep you, improving. I had a great time, man. man. I had a great time. If you don't time. keep moving forward, what happens? You're done, bro. Yeah, you're done. People you just get left behind. Even if it's not, even if it's like not a big deal, if it's new and you tell somebody about little. it, they're gonna come check it out. Yeah. But if you just uh, sit back, especially when COVID hit, you kind of get thrown to the past, and people forget about you and. It. You're done. You're just toasted up. Forget yeah. about it. Now, do you feel like people are eating out more now or less now? Uh, I'd say they're... Uh, or has your clientele changed down. to younger people? Because I see yep. that more. Yeah, because I do have... Because they have Linden a better Earth's attitude. Day. Yep. And we also built a 260-unit place next door. You've that's seen right it. next to you. So, yep. Oh, so that's not so like a... a lot of younger a, people that like are traveling to the community. city. No. Oh. A lot of people going to the city. That's the best. Poor um, so that helps. One like that. That really yeah, helps. I think it's the same people that built it. Is that right? Tritech. Tritech. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Same yeah, that's people. who built that. Yep. Same people who built the race pals. Yep. The Vanderbilt. Oh, really? Yeah, Didn't they, know that. they went in and built the Vanderbilt. Dude, you had to be there when they did oh. it. They, they, they put a bulldozer in the ballroom. They, they, they put, first, they put a hole in the back of the wall. Oh, then they put a bulldozer in that ballroom and they pushed everything out the How hole. How did they get it up there? They had the service elevator back there? Oh, yeah, the service elevator. <laughs> They had a crane. They that thing was sketchy there. when I when I was on it. I never went in there, sir. I, I don't I blame you. I wouldn't go in there. I don't blame you. No, you sent me. Yeah. Billy, come on in the elevator. Yeah. Go get me something from downstairs. Listen, the Vanderbilt was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. Very I'm not going to lie to you. It's it where, was, I uh, sister, uh, it's where I met your sister. It's where I met your family. And I hear your sister's getting married. Yeah. She's, actually, she's in Turkey right she's now. She's in Turkey right They're now. They're not getting married in Turkey. No, no. no. They wouldn't do that. Beautiful. Pl- no, she- and her and that. her fiance asked all of our permissions, all of our brothers and and dad and everybody. So he Smart did it the guy. right way. Yeah. Smart guy. Yeah. If it wasn't, it he wouldn't would be swimming with the fish in some way. Smart yeah. guy. No, no, smart. No, guy. he's a good one. Well, he's gonna have the best wife in the world because yeah. your little sister is a very special person she and is. someone I really care a lot she's for. So been. and she you always make sure said, I said hi. She always right? says hi to you, and she's. We should have had her on with us. 
Yeah, I she's tried. In Turkey, she's in Turkey. Though. She's in Turkey. Yeah. We're gonna give her a pass this time. Uh, this time. Next this, time is a different time, story. Next time there'll be no next time. Yeah. Maybe she'll want to get married at the Crust Hollow. Hey. That would be an honor for I me. I think she knows a guy. She might want be. She might. Uh, we'll see. You let her know. I put Listen, that out. The last there. time I was at Crest Hollow, actually, the first time I was at Crest Hollow in a long time was that Christina Renner one. Yeah. And I walked in and I heard you from the background <laughs> in the corner. You, Billy. I'm like, <laughs> fell up. You got scared a bit. I think I peed myself a little bit. I got a little scared. I wanted to go cry in the walk-in. That's heavy. Well, Billy, ne- don't lie. Billy never cried. Nah, He's a I tough guy. Don't let him lie. He's a tough guy. Well, Billy. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in today, brother. Anytime. Thank I you for having you, me, man. bro. And so the best of luck, time. man. Thank you. Thank you for the bourbon. Anytime. Thank you for the great Jones. I'm going to yeah. put this right here. I yeah. don't want to block my view. <laughs> that so beautiful let's... dyed beard. Hey, Billy. No, oh, I mean, you're not going to tell beard. people I have a stomach stapling. <laughs> Never. All Never. natural. Natty, as uh, they say in the bodybuilding world. Yep. Natty. Because I'm a bodybuilder now, too, Billy. Yeah, I don't know if you know. You're getting there. You look like it. The shoulders are getting broad. You got this. You saw The I'll chest is getting big. Yeah. You, want, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, you're watching the Go Cry in the Walk-In podcast. I'm Chef Cholo. This is Billy Miller. And you already know. <laughs>